Today I want to talk about reflected light. I want to explain what it is and how it brings more depth and vitality to our shadows. Okay, now reflected light in the shadows is when we have on a, on a sunlit day, the sun hits the green grass down here and it bounces into the shadow. That's one area where we have reflected light. Another is on the cow here. Again, the sunlight hits the ground and bounces up underneath the cow and we get some reflected light. So what it is, is it's warmer light because sunlight is warm, bounces into the cool shadow. So I want to warm up the area where the reflected light is, is hitting. And it wouldn't be as strong on the top because the reflected light doesn't bounce up that high necessarily. So it would be down in here, same thing with the cow, it would be on the underneath plane of the belly of the cow. There's some other areas too. You could have reflected light in here from where the light hits the trees and bounces into these shadows and so on. So there's a lot of areas. Same thing with the fence here. I've already added some of that reflected light. It's a little warmer there. Now on this barn, <clears throat> I've blocked in the shadow. The light areas are past the block in. I've blocked them in and I added some of the color and value variation. Same thing in the, in the uh, roof. But in the shadow, I haven't yet. And generally, I will block in a shadow area, like these two shadows, a shadow on the cow, with a stronger, cooler color. Here, it's kind of a bluish violet. Some of the dark is kind of the undertone showing through from the drawing. So it's just a blue. I'm not thinking local color. The local color is this faded wood so you could say kind of a muted orange. So the local color is a muted orange. But I want to get the effect of sunlight first. So I'm, I'm getting the color of the shadow, if you will, which I put in as a blue-violet. Could have been a, a blue, muted blue. But I tend to keep it pretty strong because the reflected light is going to mute it. So if I put in a gray-violet and then I mute it and add the reflected light with the orange or whatever color I'm going to use, that's going to mute it even more. So I tend to keep this a little stronger. So I'm going to start first, and here's my colors up in here, can't see all of them, but I'm going to start first by adding some of the local color into the shadow. Again, I put the shadow or the color of shadow in there first, kind of a bluish violet. Now I'm going to get a little burnt sienna orange, so I'm kind of modifying colors, get them about the value wipe off a lot of it because I just want to affect this a little bit. And I'm not thinking reflected light, I'm thinking um, just some of the local color that's inside the shadow, the local color of the wood, which again is kind of a, a muted orange or burnt sienna, kind of a, a, a warm, grayish warm color. And I could go color wise, I can add a a little bit of green, because some green also would be bouncing up in there. So I'm gonna get some Viridian. And I maybe want it slightly lighter than the value that's there, but not much. So I'm gonna get a little bit of, and this isn't thick, heavy paint. And my shadow color is wet, so I'm just lightly scrubbing it into it. And that's going to kind of, again, cause some color variation, roughly the same value. Uh, colors are bouncing around from the grass, uh, the tree, so getting some of that in there. And then also the local color of just the uh, grayed kind of burnt sienna orange wood. But now I want to really push the idea of reflected light bouncing into this area and into the cow. So when I think the light's hitting the grass, it's warm, and it's bouncing in here. I want to use a warm color, but I don't want to use cad yellow light or any strong yellows because it's just too much for the shadow. Because even though I'm adding warmth into the shadow, it still has to look like shadow. It still has to be cool. So I'm not going to use ochre either, which is a more muted yellow, and that could probably work. I'm going to use either a lizard and crimson or orange. Now the orange is definitely warm. 
but not as warm as cad yellow. So if I get some alizarin crimson, again, I'm trying to get it about the same value. That is going to be warmer, even though it's crimson, which is a cool red. It's still warmer than the blue. So even a little bit of that in there kind of shows the effect of light, but not enough. I don't think that works quite enough. So I'm going to go with the orange. And again, I want it roughly the same value as the shadow. This is a cat orange. So I'm going to lighten it just a little bit. Not putting it on real thick and heavy because I don't want it covering up the shadow. I just want it affecting the shadow. I'm going to wipe some of it off here so it's not real heavy. And into the wet paint, I'm going to add this reflected light. Now it is a little lighter than the shadow, but it has to be dark enough to stay in the shadow. And as I go up, it's just gradually going to disappear. And there's not enough, it's not maybe strong enough to warm up the shadow way up there. Now the shadow is still cool. It's just a lot warmer than it is up in here. And a little bit over here as well. Again, I don't have hardly any on the brush and I'm lightly just kind of scrubbing it in. Some of that green reflected from the trees is still there. Not much though. If I wanted to come back with the reflected green in there, it'd probably be a bit more of a yellow green. But that's giving me reflected light, also reflected color, the green bouncing in there. And again, the blue-violet, the color of the shadow is still wet. So this warmth now, it adds a lot of depth to the shadow. It's not just one flat value. Or it's not even the local color in shadow. Now it has light bouncing into it and it's gonna be a lot more vibrant. I have a lot of warm and cool colors next to which each other in here and they start to vibrate quite a bit. So same thing with the cow. I'm gonna stick with orange. A little smaller, but there's the cow. You can, like most animals, sheep, horse, cows, um, they're going to be like a box. They're going to have a bottom plane facing the ground, side plane that's facing out, and then a top plane that's facing up. So I want to get that bottom plane, and I might get it darker first with just a dark, cool color. So blue and a little bit of a crimson and It's a touch of orange just to mute it, not necessarily to warm it up. And there's the darker plane underneath the cow. Now I can get the orange just a touch lighter, but not much. Because it is light. So reflected light does lighten things, the shadow a little bit. But I still want it to be a dark underneath there. And it might be a little too dark, so I'm going to lighten it a bit more. I do have a little bit of violet in the orange, so it just doesn't look real strong. But it's that underneath plane that's catching that reflected light. And there's kind of a plane that angles down on the sides there that can also catch a little reflected light. I don't know, this looks more like a pig than a cow, but uh, I need to come in with the sunlit grass and cut into his bottom part of his head there just to shape him up a little bit. Um, now over here it's not going to be as warm as that reflected light because it's further back. So I'm going to add a little bit of the green to yellow green. Again, roughly same value, touch lighter maybe. Get a little bit of that green bouncing in there. I might get a little bit of crimson. 
you know, probably not going to use much orange because it's just not that close to the sunlight. And it's long boards of wood, so having the different uh, vertical shape or stripes in there helps. And these barns aren't very dark. You can see they're not white, but it's a faded wood. So it's, it's fairly light, but not, not white. Um, so the shadows can't be real dark either. And these are a little too dark over in here. So again, just a muted blue or blue violet, blue with a little burnt sienna, or blue and crimson with a little bit of orange or burnt sienna, and just lighten up these shadows slightly. And again, some light bouncing into here because this is closer. Closer to the sunlit area. So I'm going to come in here with some orange. And lighten that up. Maybe a little bit down in here. But I want the most here in the front barn because it's right next to the sunlight. So I might even come in here and add a bit more. But I'm also looking for color variation, especially in light shadows, light snow, light barn, uh, white cow. Uh, in the shadow, you're going to have more color variation. Now, the darker the shadow, like inside the barn or inside here, you're not going to have a whole lot. Uh, there's also going to get some darker orange and a little bit of crimson. There's some light hitting here in front of the entrance and bouncing up into here. So I'm going to warm up the shadow in there as well. But again, cad yellow light, yellow ochre, I think are a bit too light and in, uh, strong of a warm color to be used as reflected light. And I do like the vibration of, of leaving some of that brighter, cleaner blue to blue-violet here next to the more muted blue and also to the orange and the variations of green in there. So that vibration, warmth, creates a lot of depth and interest in the shadow that isn't there when you just use one value and uh, one color. I well, hope that was helpful. And if you want to see more on uh, how to paint light, watch this next video, uh, Suggesting Light with Color Temperature.